of, of how we all want authority, but we don't use it right. We don't, we don't take advantage of it. How many people, when you see a group photo, well, who's the first person you look for in a group photo? Yourself. And if you don't look good, that entire photo is garbage. Get that, it's terrible. Take that picture out of here. That is terrible. Is that not our lives in a synopsis? If one little thing in our lives is not right, we want to throw the whole thing away. We want to throw it all away because one little thing didn't go our way. It happens. But God says, I took the picture of your life. Give me some time to develop the negative. We can't always have it the way we want it as soon as we want it. It's not a Polaroid situation. Our life is not a Polaroid. We can't take the picture and then it be done two seconds later. We've got to develop that film. We've got to develop the negatives. We've got to take the negatives in our life, the sin in our life, the bills, the hell, all the, all the negative people, negative energy. And we've got to develop that. We have to overcome it. We have to take charge of it. We have to have authority of our own lives. Where do we start that? That sounds pretty good. The beginning lies in the beginning. The Genesis for your life starts in Genesis in the Bible. So let's go there first. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 28, 20 through 28. That's going to be on page 3 if you're learning the ropes. <clears throat> verse 26 says then God said let us make human beings in our image to be like us they will reign over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky the livestock all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground so God created human beings in his own image in the image of God, He created them male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God said, Authority and dominion is not something that we strive for. It is something we are born with. Authority is something that God gave us from the time He breathed air into our nostrils. When He formed us in the dirt and He breathed air into our bodies, we were given authority. Why don't we use it? Why do we let the bill collector rule our lives? Why do we let negative people rule our lives? Why do we let all these things affect us? Why do we allow the devil any dominion at all in our lives? He has none. He does not belong in your life. You have to control it. You have to rebuke His name. You have to be the one to say, I'm done. Today is the day there are no more maybes. It is all yeses. You have to speak what your life needs to be. And you have to have the faith to believe it. You cannot go around anymore letting people dictate how you will be. What type of person you will be. What type of Christian you will be. What type of mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife you will be. Lori made a confession up here earlier. I'm going to make one right now too. Because I have not taken authority of my life. I want to be a better husband to my wife. I want to be, I want to be a better listener. I want to be a better giver, a better caretaker. I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better son. Would be a better pastor, a better friend. But yet, I don't want to take what was given to me. I don't want to be fruitful and multiply. We're not just talking about childbirth here. We're talking about making Christians too, folks. Making believers. Be fruitful, multiply. Ladies and gentlemen, it is... It, it is... Just, I'm dumbfounded reading these words. I'm dumbfounded at how lack, lacking I am in my spiritual life. I am not taking advantage of a gift that God gave each and every one of us. He empowered us to 
be authority. He empowered us to have dominion over our lives. And we don't do it. You want to change the world? We talk about trying to change the world. We talk about trying to change Santa Fe and Galveston County. We can't do it. We can't. Because everybody in this room together does not have dominion over their own life. You want to start to make changes? Get rid of all the sin in your life. All of it. You want to walk in dominion like, you're, like you were uh, enthralled to be by God? You want to, you want to walk in dominion like He gave it to you? Get rid of all sin. All of it. That's not going to be popular with some people. I like watching NCIS. I like watching these different shows, listening to these different songs. They're sinning that stuff, folks. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to rain down on you, okay? I'm trying to get him to rain down on you. There's sin in this world. We're surrounded by it. We're taking part in it, whether you want to admit it or not. There's sin in your life that needs to go. It needs to go. Because you cannot have authority until you do that. We have to walk. We have to talk. Look. God gave us authority to rule over earth until Jesus comes back. And we're not doing a very good job. Think about that for a second. God gave you authority over the earth and everything in it to govern it, to rule it until Jesus comes back. Who are you fighting for here? Who are you working for here? You here for yourself, you here for Jesus. Let's think about that today. You you here to get that, that nice truck and that fancy bass boat and, and the horse trailers and all these other fancy clothes and tennis shoes that cost two hundred and fifty dollars. Come on, man, really? Who needs a two hundred and fifty dollar pair of tennis shoes? I got angry because I had to spend seventy dollars on this pair of jeans. Now I want to go back to Sears and Roebuck and get me some of them what was it? Tough skins, man. Come on. It is crazy. But we have we, we we let these things control us because we gotta have jeans. We can't walk around in our loincloth. Alright? But what if we did? What if everybody quit paying for clothes and started going back to loincloths and fig leaves? What if we got all the way back to Adam and Eve in the garden before they ever took food fruit from the tree? I'm serious. It all started in Genesis. This is where it started. We were created there. And here we are today, 2017. Driving fancy foreign cars. Wearing fancy jeans with a little bling bling on the back pocket. The, you know, the guy's shirts, the buttons on the right. And girl's shirts, the buttons on the left. This exact same shirt. Right here, my wife and I have the same shirt. If we had the same shirt, we don't. But hers would cost three times as much as mine because the buttons are on the left. And she's going to go pay for it. Lori, she's going to go pay for it. Randy, she's going to go pay for it. She's going to go pay $108 for a shirt that us guys got over at Academy for like $29.99. Why? Why are we letting these things rule our lives? They go, I mean, we, we can sit here all day and we can talk about the things that are ruling our lives. But let's just for a second, just for a second, take the world out of it. It's just you here. It's just you. What's ruling your life today? Who in this room has something that's, that's causing them not to be able to walk the straight line? Is it an addiction? Is it alcoholism? Is it drugs? Is it porn? Uh, porn? Is it your bills? Is it uh, other people in your life? Everybody has something that, that is acting as a steering current in their life. And you don't have to let it be because God gave you authority. God gave you authority. I don't understand, Brother Kevin. Well, let's turn over to page 4 and go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through 8. Let's see if we can elaborate a little bit more. Chapter 2, verse 4 through 8. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. 
When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. And there were no people to cultivate the soil. Give you a little, little idea of what's happening right here. There, there's nothing growing on the earth. God has not made it rain yet. The flowers aren't pretty. They're not blooming. The trees aren't green. The grass isn't green. It's not done yet. And there's no one to cultivate the garden. But God created a garden that was beautiful. Eastward of Eden, He created a garden. Before He created Adam, He created the garden. It was beautiful. And there were flowing streams, and there were four rivers, I believe. And there were birds, and there were fish, and there were deer, and there were... It was beautiful. But He didn't have anybody to cultivate the land yet. So He created Adam in His likeness. And He put him in the garden. What does that tell you about your life? God gave you a garden. He created it for you and then He created you and put you in the garden. There was no rain on the earth. Nothing was growing. God gave you a garden. He put you in it. And He gave you dominion over your garden. He gave you authority over your garden. Everyone in this room was given a garden before they were created. He created your garden before you. He knows your life. He knows what path you're going to take. He knows what lay in store for you. All He needs for you to do is take authority. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Nothing on the earth was beautiful except for Adam's garden. It was created for Adam. And then Adam was created put in the garden. How many of you people in this room spend time tending to other people's gardens? Don't be shy. It's not embarrassing. We all do it. You know, it, it's not so much keeping up with the Joneses as it is we want to make sure that everything is going right for everyone around us, except for us. We spend so much time in somebody else's garden, tending to their garden, that our garden becomes overgrown. Our garden has weeds and thole thistles and all kinds of briars and all this other kind of garbage. We let, we let these other things take control of us. Sound familiar? Yeah. Me too. Me too. Get back in your garden. Tend to your garden. Take dominion and authority over your garden. And everyone else's garden will begin to be fruitful and flourish because of your actions. You cannot be fruitful and multiply, brothers and sisters and Christians, unless you're taking care of your garden. Let's just face it. Everybody needs a leader. Right? We all need a leader. We have the ultimate leader. Why don't we follow him? Why do we do it part-time? So we try to take we try to take what authority we were given and we try to become leaders here on earth and take authority over things before Christ comes back so that we can maintain some sense of Christianity here on earth so people will follow us and we will come fruitful and we'll multiply, right? We're supposed to go out and make disciples. Amen? Check yourself out in the mirror, folks. It was a long, hard stare for me. And some of that staring back was pretty cold. Because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not taking authority. I have in certain aspects, but I haven't taken complete authority in my life. I have not taken dominion over my Lord. Each and every person in this room has a vice. Each and every person in this room has an addiction. Each and every person in this room has uh, an emotional roller coaster. Some of us more, more frequently than others. Okay? We, we tend to let those things control our lives. 
They control us. We don't control them. How many people Thanksgiving Day pushed away from the table? She said, Ooh, I'm stuffed. And then somebody walked by with the pumpkin pie. Somebody walked by with the bread pudding. Somebody walked by with the sweet potato pie. Whatever. Whew, I'll take some. I don't think I have room for it, but come on, we're going to try. We let that pumpkin pie control us. And then Friday morning, we're all going, oh my God, I should not have eaten so much. We knew better after it was done. We knew better in the moment. But we let it control us. The 1st and the 15th or the 15th and the 30th, those are the most days people have major bills come out of the checking account, right? How many people three or four days prior to those dates become ill? It's not funny. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm serious. Become ill because you know that that bill's coming due and you don't have the money to take care of it. What have you done in those weeks leading up to that that have, that have caused you not to have that money? What have you done in the, in the past weeks and months to change your life? What have you done to take authority over that situation so that you don't become ill when you have a bill due? So that you don't become frustrated and angry when the bill collector calls? So that you don't play uh, phone tag? You see a, a phone number pop up and you, oh, that's the bill collector. Just chunk that down and move on. What have you done to change you? What have you done to take authority over your life? Your addiction to television, your addiction to ho-hos, your addiction to drugs, alcohol, marijuana, women, men, whatever your addiction may be, why is that running your life? Why is that controlling the direction that you move? This is not a game of chess. We're not moving three spaces to the left and two spaces up. We're moving straight forward, block by block by block by block. God put us on the straight and narrow, in the light. Why do we want to continue to take these turns and cross the light and stay in the dark? Why are we taking all the feeder roads instead of being on the main lane of your life? Because we don't understand authority. We don't understand what it really means. We don't understand what it takes to get it, how to use it. We're going to learn. This is going to be like a three or four week series that we're starting this morning on the menu. Okay? It's going to take some time to get through it because, man, there's some life changing stuff in here. And I don't, want to, I don't want to be remiss and just run through it and skip over some stuff. Man, there's, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If we can start taking authority in our garden, if we can start tending to our own garden and quit tending Miss Linda's garden from my garden and quit tending Lori's garden from my garden, quit tending my wife's garden from my garden, if we just stay in our garden and we make it as beautiful and fruitful as we can make it, everything around us will begin to flourish. Everything around us will begin to become fruitful. Because when you change, you change others, right? We talked a couple weekends ago about uh, attitude changing your altitude. Remember that? You, you, you get your garden looking pretty, and you walk out and you, you take a look back at it. You have a, you have a, a sense of accomplishment. You have a sense of, of pride that comes with the work that you've done. Am I right? Look, look what I, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful garden. Next thing you know, you're kicked back looking at it, and here comes your neighbor. Man, your garden looks pretty good. Yeah, man, my garden looks good. It's beautiful, isn't it? God gave me that garden. God gave it to me. I took control of it. I told the weeds they had no dominion there. I told the evil spirits they had no dominion there. I took dominion over it. I took control of it. Next thing you know, your neighbor runs back to his garden. We find a rake in the hole. We got to get busy. Their lives start to change. Their gardens start to change. Before you know it, every garden around your garden 
is looking good because everybody's taking authority over their own stuff. And now you can stand together as one and you can say, we have authority over this area until Jesus comes back. And then we can move. We can continue to branch out. We can continue to flourish and become more fruitful. And next thing you know, we're, we're outside of Santa Fe and we're in the county, you know, and we're making things beautiful, one garden at a time. We're, we're bringing people to know their, their God-given birthright of dominion. We're explaining it. We're giving it to them. We're giving them the power that they've already had. We're showing them how to use it. And then, and then, we're, and then we're branching out into Harris and Montgomery and Missouri. And, it, and it's just look, picture a map right there right now. And it's just gray or brown, ugly, nasty, some bland color. And right there in Santa Fe, there's a whole big popping full of colors. And then it starts growing and growing. And before you know it, Texas is this beautiful multitude of colors and the rest of the map is gray and dark but you begin to see little specks of color coming up all around it because your family and your friends who live somewhere else in another state they catch fire from what you're doing and they start working on their garden can you see it i can see it i can feel it i can feel it i felt it sunday last sunday i felt it sitting on my couch in my rv it can happen if we just take authority over our lives. We just read in Genesis, God gave us authority over all the earth and everything in it and on it. I don't believe the mustard seed. I don't, I don't believe if I had just that much faith, I could move a mountain. That's part of the problem. I had serious doubts about Thursday. 500 meals. How are we going to feed 500 people? We only had 200 pre-registered. There, there wasn't a drumstick left to be found. We fed 500 people. God let it happen. Not Kevin. Not that great cowboy shirt. Not all the volunteers that showed up. God took control where my mustard seed fell on the ground and I was looking for it. Don't tell me faith isn't real. Don't tell me faith doesn't exist because that's proof. What did that song say this morning? When I'm weak, thou art strong. Man, I had a moment of weakness Thursday. I was standing out there looking through the door at all this food that was lined up on this table. disappointed people. I didn't say that to anybody. I just kept it to myself. <laughs> I'm telling you, there wasn't, there wasn't even a turkey skin left anywhere. It was gone. Okay? I think we wound up doing 483 complete meals and we had the rest of them were like partials. We ran out of certain things because our portions got out of hand. Big deal? No, so what? We didn't throw anything away. It all went somewhere. Thank God for people like the Gillises who run through the, the charity, uh, Lighthouse Charity Group. Thank you all very much for letting us be part of that. What was the total number of meals y'all did? 5,100. 5, meals Lighthouse Charity Group did for Thanksgiving. That, ladies and gentlemen, is taking authority. Turn with me to uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19 on page 792. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you have the belief in your heart that God is who He says He is, and you have accepted Jesus into your heart, and you have faith like a mustard seed, you can walk amongst the evil, and when they get out of line, you can step right on them. You can step right on them and squish them out. You have the authority in your life to kick evil right out of the way. Get out. Get out. 
I don't approve of, of you being in my life. Get out. Your dark, not light. Get out. You have the authority to do that. But you don't. You don't use it. You don't know you have it. You don't know how to use it. It has to start by removing all sin from your life. You have to be a follower of Jesus Christ today, tomorrow, and forever. Not today, and then we skip a couple of days, and then we go back. We, that's not how it gets done. That's not real faith. Real faith is when you have no money left in the bank, the, the tank is empty, and you still find a way to get here on Sunday to praise and worship. Real faith is when you think there is no hope left in your life because you have gone down into that dark, stinky pit we talked about a couple of weeks ago. You think there's no way you're ever going to get out. You've lost hope. But yet somehow you scratch and crawl and you climb your way out of there. That is faith. And you have to maintain that type of faith every second of your life. You cannot doubt whether or not you're going to serve 500 meals. Of course you're going to serve 500 meals because God said you were going to. You have to have faith in order to have authority. You have to have faith in order to battle evil in your life. You have to have faith to be able to tell the devil, you have no dominion here, get out. You have the authority to do that. God gave you that authority. Is that not amazing? We all have the authority to kick evil out of our lives. We can change our own lives by realizing our birthright. We just have to get there. We have to get there. And that's where we're going to start today. Okay? We're going to start there today. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 14 on page 861. Chapter 6, verse 14. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Amen. Praise Jesus. Sin has no control over you. You live under the good graces of God. Act like it. Walk away from it. Repent. Turn and run from your sin. If that means you can no longer watch Survivor because people are running around naked on the beach, that means you can't watch Survivor. If that means you can no longer listen to rap music because it talks about killing cops and killing people, you can't listen to rap music. If you can only go watch PG-13 movies because you're afraid somebody's going to drop an F-bomb in the middle of a movie theater, you can't go there. Remove sin from your life. <laughs> Brother Kevin, you have done jumped off the deep end, Jack. Telling me I can't go to Cinemark after, after, the, after church today and watch whatever movie it is you want to watch. I'm not telling you you can't go. What I'm telling you is that you're not going to have authority over your life until you stop going. You're not going to have authority over your life, dominion over your life, control over your life, rule over your life, until you remove all sin from your life. Long process, Jack. Long process. Something we should have started. I don't know why dominion is not preached in every church more often than it is. I cannot tell you that I've been to another church anywhere and heard a sermon about dominion. I'm 48 years old and I'm just now learning that I have control. I have the authority in my garden. I have authority over this earth. I have no reason to be afraid of snakes. I have no reason to be afraid of the bill collector, the drugs, the alcohol, the guns. I have, I have authority. You have authority. Turn with me to Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 19 through 23 on page 895. Chapter 1, verse 19 through 23. Greetings from Brother Paul. Here we go. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. 
for us who believe in Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is His body. It is made full 